I want to make sure that I acknowledge the sponsor of the show, Teach Henley, because Teach Henley sent me this new pack. They sent me the new Teach pack, so I just literally pulled the paper out, got it out of the mail, and I started going through it, and I got a little bit more excited than I should. You know what I'm saying? So they did send me the Teach pack, and I don't even know what this is yet. So I'm assuming this is what you get when you first uh, order your teach. And I don't know what this is. Oh, this is dope. This is absolutely dope. Is this a nail kit? Ladies, get this for the fellas. Fellas, don't wait for the ladies to get it for you. This is free. This just comes with it. 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. Literally. Oh, snaps. I didn't know that they were sending it like this. Real talk. So this is the nail kit that they sending you. All right. So now you ain't looking like a dusty dusty. This is a free gift straight from Teach. For the people that ordered the Teach, they got the small one for the little hands like mine's. They got the big joints for your toenails. And then uh, they got the joints at the bottom too. You know what I'm saying? For y'all, that's a little bit more crustier than usual. All right, so that's one of the free gifts that Teej got inside of the pack. And then, uh, what is this? It says, squeeze a quarter size amount of Teej Hanley body wash on the center of the wet bristles. Lather, scrub, rinse, and repeat for the perfectly satisfying wash every time. So that's inside of there also, right? Ooh, I can get my rubber ducky on right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach for sending me that uncomplicated skincare for men. And then uh, what we got in here? We got the actual Teach pack, right? So this is the normal Teach pack, but then they gave me the super size joint for the people. They wanted me to show the people exactly what they got when they ordered that, that first Teach pack when you're getting your 30% off your first order. And then you get your free gifts. You get two free gifts and then the 20% off for life. So the 20% off for life is a new thing. And... Um, Dang, I ain't even got my keys on me to open this up. Maybe I can use the, the little nail clipper thing. I ain't got to buy no nail clipper for my new joint downtown. And then you get all of the all of the washes, all of the scrubs, all of the AM, the PMs, and all of that stuff. So you got the whole thing inside of there for you to make sure you take care of yourself. But you got to make sure you take care of it every day. Right. We don't want to miss days. We don't want to be looking like dusty dusties. It does not absolve you from being able to make sure that you brush your teeth, brush your teeth. It don't fix the teeth problem. Don't fix you ironing your clothes. Don't fix you being able to take care of your business. But it absolutely makes sure that your skin is phenomenal, even when you go on between shaves. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach Henley. We absolutely appreciate you. Thank you for continuing to hold us down. Uh, I might do an official teach commercial, but I like just talking authentically to the people. I like giving the people the authentic look of what it is that you're dealing with. And I want you to hear from me personally, because anybody can do that little pitch and they can make some little videos. But very few of us can actually speak to the products uh, of exactly what it is that you're supposed to use. So, yeah, teach Hanley 30 percent off your your first order and then 20 percent off for life. That's the Anton Daniels pack, 20 percent off for life using any other teach pack. Make sure that you go ahead and let that go. Um, and make sure you tap into the link. It's in the description and take care of it, all right? What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock out with me. It is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, year of our Lord. Yeah, we got started not only on time, but we set the live stream for about five minutes earlier than we normally would. I'm going to just slowly progress back to the morning instead of a little bit more in the afternoon. I know for my people over there on the West Coast, we definitely already here in the morning. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? I appreciate y'all for continuing to rock out with me. How did y'all enjoy the show last night? It was crazy. Crazy. The show last night was absolutely insane, deranged, and crazy. 
I don't know how Q got all of this put together, but for some reason, somehow we continue to improve and we get better every single every single day. I appreciate everybody that tuned into the live stream last night on the Anton Daniels channel. Thank you for continuing to rock with us. I am excited to be here before you today. Hopefully, hopefully we get some news, we get some entertainment. I help you get through your day and we throw a little bit of the medicine inside of the candy. If y'all not a part of the Patreon, then you are missing out. What are you doing? What are you doing? Trap, it was wild last night. What are you doing? If you are not a bag chaser and you're not a part of the Patreon, the link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. That baby girl, she did rage quit last night. I didn't know what to do. You know, when I found out, oh, missed a lot. You missed it. When I found out last night, Q is incredible, ain't she? When I, when I jumped on the live stream and I seen all of the characters that was there, I seen 2K, I seen Randy Rosario, my homegirl here from Detroit. I seen Mika, I seen Q, I seen Quentin, I seen Logic. I said, what the f I said, this is about to be, I don't know what's going to happen. I was already prepared for the live stream to get censored. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. And then I seen a homegirl that was a stripper. I'm in love with a stripper. I seen her rage quit last night. I said, whoa, I wasn't even the one to make her rage quit. It was 2K. I said, 2K is crazy. I'm going to have to take this guy on tour with me. Man, it was insane last night. If y'all did not watch the live stream, if y'all wasn't tuned in, make sure you do so. Go and check it out. Uh, it was an incredible, very entertaining and incredible. Yes, you did miss it. It's not restricted. It's just not monetized. <laughs> I'm at a point in my life where I don't necessarily worry about the monetization of the streams anymore. It just be like, listen, we're going to have a good time. And if we just so happen to get monetized, then we get monetized. If we don't, then we don't. And then the people bless us anyway. So we just going to put on a good show and I'm going to make sure that I add value into your life. And then my people going to get paid how they get paid. And this is going to be the end of it. You know what I'm saying? What up, y'all? Y'all let me know where y'all checking in from. What's up, OG Rihanna? What's up, McCole? Oh, yes, y'all did miss it. Y'all did miss it last night. My dog missed a lot in the building. Kojak, Ari. What up, Ari? Ari was on the panel. Hey, y'all let me know where y'all checking in from. Give me an alley-oop. Where y'all checking in from? Tap in. Let me know what city you in. Would you ever consider a panel on Patreon? For what? Why would I do that? The way Q got fried by old school, he shouldn't be allowed on panels anymore. <laughs> Virginia Beach, Orlando, I see y'all. Um, Montana, Fort Lauderdale, Tulsa. Shout out to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, you from where Quentin from? Fort Lauderdale, Chicago, Chesterfield, Atlanta, Georgia, Little Rock, Durban, South Africa, uh, DMV. S S A T X. What is oh San Antonio, Texas, North Miami Beach, Florida, Duval, Alabama, H Town, Peachtree Corners, Chicago, New York, Novi, Sacramento, Elk Grove, Naptown, Spokane, Windsor. Shout out to Windsor. Uh, New York, uh, Chicago, Charlotte, Miami Beach, Detroit, Arsenal, Atlanta, Vero Beach, Florida, Florida. Uh, let's see what else we got. Battle Creek, Memphis, Miami Beach, Chicago. Shout out to my people from Japan. <laughs> Tahoe, California, Detroit, New Mexico, Chicago, DMV, D.C., Yaktown. Shout out to my Pontiac people in the building. Uh, Austin, Texas. What up, though? What up, Tamika? Fontana, California, San Antonio. I got to visit San Antonio, Texas. That's one of the people that's on my bucket list. Uh, DMV, New Orleans, Naptown, Annapolis, Maryland, Salisbury, North Carolina, Lessie, uh, Lessie Laurie, <laughs> El Dorado, Arkansas, Philly, Marietta, Georgia, uh, LA, what up, what up, what up, Bonnie, hello from Bonnie in, in Scotland. Shout out to Scotland. Houston is the new Atlanta. Philly. Teach Tonathan is here. Yes, I am. North Carolina, Philly. Chicago, Midway, Oklahoma City, Upper Marlboro. Uh, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up to all of my friends and my family out here in the streets. I said, see, Connie says she out here in Atlanta getting that work on. 
Raleigh, North Carolina, Alhambra, California. Oh, I can't wait to visit Alhambra. It's got to be nice over there if, if uh, Tanisha is over there. Jersey City, says she in the building. Granbury, Texas, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, just shared the link. Chicago tapping in. If y'all not sharing this with y'all friends and family, shout out to Detroit. If y'all not sharing this with your friends and family, then you got another thing coming because I'm not happy. I'm not happy. At all. At all. You know what I want y'all to do also? Make sure that y'all subscribe to Pop Culture Mika. M-I-C-C-A. Pop Culture Mika on YouTube. All right? I want y'all to subscribe to her channel. Uh, and we got new stuff, stuff popping off, new stuff popping. So uh, I got a whole interview that's dropping on there. All right? So when she share it, I'm going to share it with you guys on my community tab. And then we're going to get it popping. Also, make sure y'all tap into uh, After Hours tonight. And time will be kicking it with After Hours tonight, making sure that I have some uncomfortable conversations. I don't know what I'm going to talk about tonight, but we definitely going to get it popping. And life is good, man. Life is good. So uh, before I get started throughout the day, of course, I want to acknowledge a couple of the Super Chats. And, and... I also want to make sure that I acknowledge the people on Cash App because you are the ones that absolutely support the show. And it's my birthday this weekend. Saturday is my birthday. We're going to talk about that on Friday. All right, so uh, first and foremost, I give a, got to give a shout-out to my guy, Mike That Dude on Cash App. <laughs> shout-out to Mike That Dude. I appreciate you, my guy. It does not go unnoticed every single weekday. I appreciate you. Thank you to my dog, Mike, that dude. Let me acknowledge a couple of the early Super Chatters. Miss Lady J in the building. Shout out to Miss Lady J says, still watch, still waiting on my homework patiently. Miss Lady J, you waiting on your homework patiently? Yo, I had some awesome coaching calls last night. Great balance on the panel, says Simrose. I had some awesome coaching calls last night. Shout out to Wendell Kilgore. Wendell says, uh, good morning, AD. Fire show last night. You seemed like you was crashing asleep towards the end. Shout out to you and the panel. Let's run it up this week. Man, don't y'all know that I'll be out here working? And then I get up right in the morning and we right back to it. And then I got, got to get into corporate America. Then I had to send some checks out for um, the drywall because the drywall people is coming in and they about to do some stuff. Man, I'm spending so much time enjoying my life living offline. I ain't even going to be honest. With, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm spending so much of my time and my life living inconspicuous. And, and, and I don't share as much as I used to. And I'm just slowly but surely pulling back of what the things is that I reveal and I have going on in my life. And one of the reasons is because I'm starting to enjoy it a lot more. I like it. I like just jumping into the pool, working out in the morning and having a good time and and nobody knows about it. And it's just me. It feels so great. So great. But thank you to Wendell. I appreciate you for the super chat also. And thank you to everybody that continues to support the platform. Y'all ready to get started? We got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover. Thank you, OG Rihanna. I appreciate that. We got a lot to cover today. All right. So got to get into this Lori Lightfoot conversation. Got to get into this uh, Tiffany Henyard situation. Got to go back into Chicago and see what's happening. I heard Missy Elliott is having a concert. People is over here taking people lives. It's a domestic dispute. Lawyers is killing each other. Walmart is removing kiosks. 99 cent stores is closing. Trump is, is facing more legal woes and he took an official stance on abortion. We don't know what's going to happen. All I know is it's a lot to go over and I got to keep you guys on what's going on out here in these streets, out here in these streets. And then in addition to that, I want to make sure that I get y'all through y'all day, all right? So let's get started. Rich Reloader says, add Sir Ism to the panel. All right, Rich, I hear you, I hear you. I want to try to add a couple little things in here, a couple little things in here. I understand that it may not be for everybody, so, uh, but I am going to do it just because I think that it would help me help you become a better you 
so that you can then help me. All right. Shout out to Tia Marie. So when I remember, if I remember, I do want to get the show started a little bit differently before we do quick hits. Just sending up a quick prayer. Hey, Lord, you say where two or three is gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of us. All right. So what we want to do is we want to come together. We want to have a great show. We want to entertain people. We want to add value into their life. We want to help them get started throughout their day. Hopefully, getting them started in the morning, which is one of the reasons why we do the Millionaire Morning Show, will carry them throughout their day instead of infecting them with negativity. We end up infecting them with entertainment, positivity, and a great, great, great show that is also, also informative. And then hopefully we get something out of it more than just the entertainment, right? But also look on your people, help them, make sure they make more money, make sure they tap into the bag chasers, make sure they align with the right people, get rid of the wrong people that's in their life. Anybody that's going through something, make sure that you fix it for them. Don't let them go through more than they can handle. Buffer it for them, but let them learn the lesson, all right? Bless us to have a great show. Bless every single person that tunes into this to get something out of it and to be better than they were before they tuned in. I love you. I appreciate you. We ask all of these blessings in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and get the show started. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to start with, uh, well, we got one more super chat we want to tap into. Shout out to the Empire Foundation says, top of the day, Anton, what's going on in Chicago land? Is Big Top Soul Circus. Shout out to my dog, Empire Foundation. I appreciate you, big dog, for holding me down. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the show. I'm going to continue to read Super Chats throughout the show. Thank you to everybody that continues to tap in. Uh, and let's get it rocking. It's Quick Hits, ladies and gentlemen. Quick Hits is a segment of the show that we don't necessarily think deserves a whole lot of time to, but we definitely want to tap in here and there and make sure that we keep you all informed on what's going on out here in these streets. All right. First and foremost, we're going to do four quick hits today. Instead of three, instead of two, instead of one, we're going to do four quick hits today, all right? First things first, I wake up this morning and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Missy Elliott? Busta Rhymes? Sierra. And then possibly Timbaland? And this is what I seen pop up on my timeline. Well, actually, it popped up as an advertisement. It didn't even pop up on my timeline. So I clicked the video, and then it popped up as an advertisement. I said, whoa, what is going on here? So check this out. These three icons come together to show you something you've never seen before. Mm, something not right. I this is not earth. Oof. I'm going to figure this I can't out. I done bust the wrong turn at Mars real quick. Said I can't breathe. I think I'm gonna faint. You're not about to faint. That's that corset is so tight. Let me call Tim, because mm. I ain't even playing with y'all. Tim. Yo, Missy, where you at? He made a wrong turn. There will be no tour like it. Yes, in pure Missy fashion, the Out of This World tour on brand kicks off this summer. As you can see, it also in Fort Worth. A lot of fans are excited that they finally get to see Missy for the first time on stage. It's hard to believe that she's never done her very own tour. Tickets go on sale this Friday. So, um, Missy is doing a tour. I can't even lie. I'm a little bit excited. I am not a person that go, likes to go to a lot of major concerts. Uh, and one of the reasons that I don't is just I don't, I don't think that performances are what they need to be. You're going to have to actually be um something that i want to see in order for me to spend money and this is a, a a tour that i will probably go and visit i think that the last the last concert what's the last concert that i went to oh usher the last show that i went to was usher and i thought that usher was awesome uh one of the best concerts that i ever visit that i ever went to was coldplay the last time that they did a north american tour we went to coldplay that was awesome and, you know, I get free tickets here and there from different places and for suites to go and see something. I think I've seen Lil Wayne or something like that. But um, this is more up my alley. This is my speed. This is definitely my speed. So um, I am going to be getting tickets. Actually, I think I already got tickets. Yeah, I already got my tickets. So, you know, they be having a pre-sale, the early event for certain people or whatever like that. So definitely got that. I'm going to be... Reading these super chats. Shout out to the dog Jay Woodfin in the building. I appreciate you, bro, for tapping in. I'm gonna be reading that super chat shortly. But yes, I will be going to this concert. I will be sitting front row. 
Hopefully I can get a suite. I would prefer to be as well. Maybe this is more of a front row concert. So yeah, Missy Elliott uh, and friends is going to be doing her thing, especially Timbaland. I'm a Timbaland fan. All right. So that's first things first. Uh, in addition to that, Jonathan Majors, I covered this yesterday on the Anton Daniels channel, but Jonathan Majors was recently sentenced. Uh, check it out. This is new at 11. Marvel actor Jonathan Majors just learned his sentence this morning, and it comes after a Manhattan jury found him guilty of assaulting and harassing his ex-girlfriend. News 4's Romney Smith at the criminal courthouse in lower Manhattan with the judge's decision this morning. Romney. Good morning to you, Adam. You know, the judge said after consulting both sides and the fact that Jonathan Majors had no prior criminal history, that jail was not appropriate in this particular situation. But he still wanted to hand down a sentence that would benefit Majors and also that something the victim would approve of as appropriate. Earlier today, inside the courtroom, I was there as everyone took their time talking. The judge sentenced actor Jonathan Majors to a 52-week in-person domestic violence counseling program. He has to continue his current therapy. A restraining order will be enforced for the victim and he can only have contact with Grace Jabari in court in future legal proceedings. He was also fined $250. Now Majors is the actor found innocent on two charges, but he was convicted for reckless assault in the third degree and harassment, neither of which is a felony. All charges are related to a domestic violence incident involving his ex-girlfriend Grace Jabari. Jabari claims that Majors broke her finger, twisted her arm behind her back, hit her, and pushed her in the backseat of a vehicle. As a result of being found guilty on two counts, the mega movie studio Marvel fired Majors from a big role as Kane the Conqueror in an upcoming movie series. Majors has denied ever physically abusing a woman. Major didn't speak today, but his lawyer spoke on his behalf and said that he would not be saying anything and would be remain mute today. And the reason is because he she didn't want anything that he could have said to be used against him in an upcoming federal civil trial that his victim will be filing. He said, so that's the play. A lot of people was trying to figure out, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is this even a big deal? Jonathan Majors is going to be okay. I seen somebody in the chat said, Jonathan Majors is going to be okay, right? And why would Jonathan Majors appeal this in the first place? Why is he appealing a, a criminal charge to where he only has to do 52 weeks in person counseling? He's not actually going to have no jail time. Well, it's a couple different reasons. Number one, because I don't believe that he's guilty. They don't believe that he's guilty. Uh, obviously, they don't believe that this is going to affect him um, as far as him going to jail. But number one, it took away a lot of money out of his pocket, especially when it comes to the roles that he missed. The second thing is, and I'll probably be covering this on After Hours tonight, is that there's an upcoming civil trial. So the fact that he was convicted in criminal court, regardless of how bad or how severe the, the, the sentencing was, the real play was the money. So the ex-girlfriend now has an upcoming civil trial. Money. You aligning yourself with the wrong woman is going to cost you on the front end. And the back end. Not only are you, going, are you going to lose movie roles, but you're also going to possibly be in a civil trial to where she can now ask for money. And then who knows how much that civil trial is going to be. So not only is this costing them in lawyers, it costed them money when it came to, um, you know, his movie roles that he lost. And she's taking them to civil trial. And I'm supposed to be the guy that sit here and advocate for men to put themselves in a situation under duress without informing them of what the pros and the cons could be as a result of it. Somebody tell me or somebody help me to understand why I should be quiet and making sure that I warn these guys or I keep them informed on what the possibilities could be if they align themselves with the wrong person. Imagine running away from somebody that's chasing you down the street, suing you, and prosecuting you and pressing charges on you. Imagine that. Imagine on a New York street where we have all of this surveillance technology and where a woman could run, a, run, chase you down, go out and party the same night, go out and party the next night. Then she can come back, press charges against you, sue you, and ruin your complete life. 
Everything that you work for for your entire life is all down the drain. Imagine a life. Imagine a day. Imagine a time that this is real. I can do a whole segment on this, but this is just quick hits. Don't worry about it. I'm going to cover it in, a, in another video on the Anton Daniels channel. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna read, and I'm going to read Super Chat shortly. Uh, also, out here in these streets, uh, shout out to uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, come on back to the front of the congregation. And also developing tonight, a triple shooting in West Philly. They're on the 5300 block of Chancellor Street. That was around 530 tonight. And Seanette, the good news here, all the victims are stable tonight. That is true, Jason, but as you can imagine, neighbors are traumatized. Police did not say how many shots were fired, but I can tell you that evidence markers littered that entire street. Now, a block captain tells me that she was almost caught in the gunfire. People, just put down the guns, please. I wouldn't want nobody else to go through what I went through. Karima Richardson has a picture of her 20-year-old son, Ramir Jackson, painted on the front of her Southwest Philly home. Someone shot him June 20th of last year, just around the corner. Innocent kids was out here. Innocent ones. And all y'all want to do is shoot. No, we t we're tired. Richardson is brought to tears today because the trauma of gunfire was literally close to home again. Police say people were firing at each other from opposite ends of the 5300 block of Chancellor Street. You just hear all these gunshots. And as I'm parking and I'm getting out the car, you see another young man. I don't know if he was just coming down retaliating or whatever, but he's just like shooting after the car. But... It's broad daylight with families out. Andrea Johnson is the block captain and had just gotten home when it happened. To come home and to almost be caught in gunfire, it's like one of the most heart disheartening things. Police say the call came in just after 5.30 this afternoon. Upon police arrival, they located three individuals that were shot, one in the 54, one in the 54 block of Walnut Street. This husband and wife say they are looking to move their family off the block. A few seconds later, it was just a pop, pop, pop. We're like... Obviously, our kids are in the room. We're like, go upstairs in the back room, get away from it. It makes me worry. I, uh, to be honest, I've been trying to get my mother off <laughs> off the block for a few years, but she raised her kids here. She had, you know, her husband died here. You know, my father died of a heart attack. You know, this is her home, and this is our home. And again, Jason and Sheba, police say the three male victims are in stable condition. No arrests have been made, no weapon recovered, and so far, no motive. Shout out to the thugs and the young people in Philadelphia out here creating chaos, crime, corruption, broad daylight shooting at each other, neighbors getting caught in the crossfire, don't nobody care about granny, don't nobody care about the block captain, don't nobody care about nobody. Everybody just going to take everybody's life. I keep telling y'all that it's a demonic spirit that's out here that's absolutely infecting and impacting how y'all living y'all life on a daily basis, but y'all wanted it to be this way. And so many ways we actually justified this. So many ways we justified it with our, our behavior. Mm, mm, mm. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hated to have this conversation. I did not want to, I'm not going to lie to you. Of all of the things that I wanted to actually review today, and the different things that was across my desk, and I had to pick, and I said, you know what, we're going to go with four instead of three. And I wanted to add this fourth one in here just so y'all can see that I'm not biased. Man shot somebody at the Chipotle over guacamole. Let me say that one more time. Listen, I'm not proud of my people. Of all the people that they can hold accountable, they hold Anton from Anton Daniels accountable. You got people out here shooting people over the counter, over the counter, over guacamole, guacamole. You went into into Chipotle on guac about guacamole. And no, this is not Detroit. Let's just be clear. This is outside of Detroit. Okay, this is not Detroit. This is Southfield, Michigan. I know a lot of people automatically want to tie it to the city. No, this is not Detroit, okay? All right, let's get into it. 
Police body cam video of a man being arrested after he allegedly shot a restaurant employee because he was angry about guacamole. The reason that this happened is because of poor decisions, inability to control emotions, and that's what led uh, to the shooting. It happened Friday night at the Chipotle on Evergreen in Southfield. This happened right across the street from the police station. So what's the nerve of that? It happened right across the street from the police station. Wow. And you think you're going to get away with it? 32 year old Aaron Michael Brown arrested a short distance away at a press conference on Monday, a timeline. What's up with all these Michael Browns, too? Mr. Aaron Brown entered the Chipotle oh, restaurant with his wife. While standing at the register, Mr. Brown asked for extra guacamole on his food that he had just purchased. Wait, 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 wait. He had a wife? He walked in with a wife. Let me just replay that one more time. I just want to make sure that we all on the same page. Brown entered the Chipotle restaurant with his wife. While standing at the register, Mr. Brown asked for extra guacamole on his food that he had just purchased. Police say he was upset because it wasn't enough guacamole. Mr. Brown then called the female Chipotle employee a derogatory name of the B word, mm -hmm. which upset her understandably. Fellow employees took her to the back to try to calm her down, leaving the front counter unattended. Our suspect, Mr. Brown, uh, who previously had paid for his food items, uh, began to proceed to go around the counter and began to bag his own items, and then he took a cup and filled it with guacamole. A 21-year-old male employee tried to stop him. <laughs> physical altercation, and then Brown, a licensed CPL holder with no prior criminal history, allegedly shoots the employee in the leg, then takes his food and calmly walks out. I was in my car and I saw him just walk out to his car, close the door and just drive off. Like he didn't, he didn't speed off or anything. It was, it was weird to see, but it was like, you'd think you want to get out of there fast, but he, it's like he didn't care. I mean, <laughs> as you can see, the people that's the witnesses over here, this is not a bad neighborhood. This is not the hood. This is not a bad, bad neighborhood. This is not a space where you see a whole lot of gang activity or anything like that. It is very much a decent suburb. It is a very, very decent suburb. Um, imagine getting going to prison. Imagine going to prison and they say, hey, fam, what you went for? Yeah, man, I shot a dude over some guacamole. If this dude is that unhinged over guacamole at a Chipotle across from a police station, I could only imagine what goes on inside of that household. I could only imagine what happens inside of that household. It's a strong possibility he got kids, he got a wife, and this dude is over there calling chicks bitches inside of the Southfield. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you what the news said. Calling chicks bees inside of the, the the Chipotle across the street from the police station. You go in and you bag your own stuff and then you shoot a dude in the leg. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're going to say he a real one, Junior Larky. You absolutely right. They're going to say he a real one. Now you're in prison over guac. It's very scary. I, I don't know. Brown is being held on a $20,000 cash bond and facing several charges, including assault with intent to do great bodily harm. The victim is expected to make a full recovery. Imagine going to work and getting shot in the leg over guacamole. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits. Let me read these super chats because I love the people that love me. Uh, shout out to Steve on says, are you enjoying? Hold on. Let me get that up there. I'm sorry. Are you enjoying the Apple Vision Pros? I am. I use them almost, almost every single day. Every day that I'm here in downtown Detroit, I mostly use my Apple Vision Pros for productivity reasons, right? Um, and I'll have like four different things up on the screen. Um, when I go, and usually when I'm working in the penthouse or if I'm working down, well, not necessarily when I'm working here, but when I'm in the penthouse, uh, I absolutely have my app Apple Vision Pros on, and it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. I'm looking to actually try out some things, 
and we looking to try to figure out if we can develop some applications around it. So, yeah, man, it's been worth the the, the ride. I've been learning a lot about it. I think that it's an absolutely great product, and I think that it's going to grow on people. And I think that they're also going to make some cheaper versions for y'all, for everybody else. So, shout out to you. I appreciate you, big dog. Thank you for holding me down. Let me give a round of applause for my dog. Jay Woodfin says, had to lock it down till I hit that 100,000 subs, big dog. I'm back. Hey, Jay Woodfin is out here killing the game, y'all. Went down. He about to get his plaque. Hey, shout out to the content creators because people have no clue how difficult it is to actually, actually be successful as a content creator. People have no clue. It is hard. It is incredibly difficult for you to be able to build up an audience to keep their attention, to do well as a content creator. People have no clue. This is, you are in rare territory, Jay Woodfin. Let me give a, another round of applause for him. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Woodfin for running it up and congratulations. Make sure y'all go and check out his channel. We love Jay. Self Made Forever says, AD, I hope you give 2K that YouTube 360 comedy special with a drop of blood on it. <laughs> 2K is special, ain't he? Um, that conversation was phenomenal. Hope Lil Joy and Mika come back. Uh, hope Randy stop bragging about being from the hood. Great show. Y'all enjoyed that show last night. Make sure y'all go and restream that. Uh, Willie Love. Shout out to Willie Love. Says it's airy season. Just turned 30 today. Looking forward to my 30s. Had, for what my 30s. Hey, listen. As you get older, it gets better. As you get older, it gets better. Look forward to it, Willie. I'm going to be 42 this weekend. Hold on. Let me just take that in for a minute. I'm going to be 42 this weekend. And y'all better know that I got an exit strategy. I'm not going nowhere no time soon. But I was thinking about it and I was saying, yo, I wonder if I'm going to retire at 50 from content creation altogether. Am I just going to disappear into the night? That means y'all got eight more years of me. Eight more years. And then I might, not saying that I am, but I definitely got an exit strategy from all this nonsense. I might be gone with the wind, baby. <laughs> Who knows? But we're going to say it is airy season. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm going to have the energy to do it past 50. So y'all better enjoy me while y'all got me. Because we're going to run it up while we're here. You know what I'm saying? P. Shank says, good morning, Mr. Anton Daniels, the Millionaire Morning Show. I enjoy it so much. Yeah, shout out to P. Shank. Let me give a round of applause for my dog. <laughs> Truck and Blueprint is in the building. Says, Anton, you are definitely doing God's work. I know you could easily sit back and enjoy your life free of it all. But to see a man stand on who he is and believes and what he believes in, I salute you, brother. I pray God keeps his anointing on you. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Yes, yes. I thank you for Truck and Blueprint. And as long as y'all here and y'all want to hear from me, I'm going to be here to continue to uh, pour, pour into y'all. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon, man. I did re-upload the live stream that we did Sunday for y'all, and we went into banking stocks, and I showed y'all how banks make money, and we had an extensive conversation about it. It's so much information. And I'm dropping a video for y'all before my birthday. <laughs> Before my birthday, and I'm going to break down and show y'all exactly every single thing that I do behind the scenes in order to be able to make money when it comes to content creation. Enforcer 2K9 says, you're running away from somebody, then, you, then they convict you. They convict you for harassment. Maybe Jason and Michael Myers should start suing folks. Facts. Jonathan Majors got it bad out here. Good God. Uh, AL says, it's a block away from Detroit City Line. No, it's not. That is not. Look at AL want to be spicy. Yo, never see from AL until he want to throw something spicy. Devastator says, that's why I won't move to Southfield. Listen, this is an isolated incident. Don't sit here and tell me that Southfield is bad. I just recently bought some, some land over there. <laughs> I'm going to be building some houses in Southfield. It's a very, 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 very nice place to be. Uh, Travis Revis says, this is why they asked for 20, 20 plus. I've seen countless videos like this, although I won't agree with the $20 plus. Something needs to change. Yeah, shout out to that. I appreciate you, Travis Rebus. Uh, Jay Johnson in the building says, blessings to you, AD. I am studying the Patreon stock video 
by the milliseconds. I'm going to pay the one-on-one coaching call. Shout out from Oakland, town, Vietnam. Shout out to you and my bag chasers. Make sure that you guys tap into the Patreon. I'm telling you, with so much information, and y'all need to really, really leverage that information in order to run it up. All right, let's go ahead and get into the show. We got a lot to cover. But before we start with the show, again, make sure y'all support the platform. Teach Hanley, 30% off your first order, plus 30%, uh, 20% off for life. That link is in the description. Tap into the Patreon. Make sure you send this to your family and friends. We don't want to be rich by ourselves. Let's get into it, y'all. Let's get into it. So, first things first. Beetlejuice, I mean, I'm sorry. Dang. I can't be saying that online because I'm, I'm working on some stuff behind the scenes. I'm always shooting myself in the foot. Lori. Lori. Lightfoot. Shout out to Lori Lightfoot. You know, I didn't really get a chance to really dig into Lori Lightfoot the way that I'm digging into what's happening in Chicago today. Because we switched formats and we wanted to go a little bit deeper into certain things that was happening out here in these streets. But Lori Lightfoot has recently been recently been anointed town investigator of Dalton and Tiffany Henyard. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Of all the things, now I'm starting to question the trustees over there in Dalton. Listen, I had a lot of love and a lot of support for you guys, but I'm starting to question the trustees over there in Dalton. Let me bring y'all up to date on what's going on over here in Dalton, Illinois. Illinois just may be cursed. It may not even be Chicago. It may just be Illinois in general. Make sure I hit a like for the algorithm. Let's get into it. New tonight at 10, former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot is taking on a new role. She's been tasked with investigating possible financial misconduct by an embattled South Suburban Mayor. CBS 2's Maribel Gonzalez is live in Dalton for us tonight, where Lightfoot accepted this job a few hours ago. Maribel? Yeah, Joe and Erica Lightfoot was present at tonight's special meeting. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard was not. Lightfoot says she is committed to getting down to the facts and the Board of Trustees points to her experience as a federal prosecutor and private attorney to get the job done. A standing ovation Monday night from Dalton residents as former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot accepts her appointment as special investigator. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. The village board retaining Lightfoot at a rate of $400 an hour to investigate Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard on allegations of misuse of village money. City is broke. Operating at a deficit. Almost had the police vehicles repossessed. Entire clown show over there. Listen, 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 listen. You cannot make this clown show up. Previous mayor that basically ran Chicago even further into the ground hired at $400 an hour to investigate something that apparently the FBI is already investigating. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You cannot make this stuff up. Listen, I was in support. I definitely was about to go and drive over to Dalton before my birthday on this Friday. I'm going to be honest with you. I was thinking about heading over to Dalton on Friday, spending some time over in Chicago, hanging out on O Block. <laughs> Say what up to uh, Brandon Johnson in Chicago. And then I was going to stop over to Dalton, me and my security. And I was going to see what was happening out here in these streets, man. And then I get a phone call, emails, text messages, and they said, Anton, Lori Twinkle Toes is getting $400 an hour 
to investigate Tiffany Henyard. I said, what? Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. This is how I know. This is how I know. Number one, everybody is applauding because apparently she's some kind of celebrity over there in Illinois. How? I have no clue. Number two, everybody apparently forgot about the fact that she was the pioneer of what became a sanctuary city over in Chicago in the first place, running it into the ground. And she did a horrible job, which is why she was only a one-term mayor. Another thing that people don't realize is that they voted her in based off of identity politics. Black, alphabet community, buzz cut, woman, ran the whole gamut, and then ran the city into the ground. And then you got an even worse mayor, and Mayor Johnson which he told you what he was going to do, and he's doing it even worse. And now y'all bring her in to pay her more than she was making as mayor of Chicago. Listen, you cannot make this stuff up. Let me look this up real quick. Mayor of Chicago salary. You can't make this up, bro. Seriously. And Brandon Johnson apparently just got a pay raise. I can't believe it. See, if I hadn't looked this up, then I wouldn't believe it for myself. Brandon Johnson. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson and 48 aldermen accepted themselves. They gave themselves and accepted pay raises. Can we get a round of applause for our government body getting rich off of the, off of the people? <laughs> Despite budget experts predicting a $538 million shortfall next year between Chicago's spending and revenues, meaning now in any business, in any business, you will be fired on site. Because that you are, listen, a lot of people don't understand, but as an executive, as anybody that is in any position inside of their company, you are an at will employee. You are an at-will employee, meaning that at any time, if you're not meeting expectations, cutting you off. If they don't see the value, cutting you off. Chicago and its 48 aldermen, including the mayor, in the middle of a migrant crisis and a deficit, is asking people to pay more taxes, raising the rents on the rich, continuing to fund this migrant crisis, and giving themselves a raise. You can't make this up. I've never seen people reward themselves for doing a horrible job. Despite the budget experts predicting a $538 million shortfall next year between Chicago spending and revenues, only two city leaders, only two of the 48, because they got 50 of them, only two of them said, you know what? We don't really deserve a raise right now, and the city is in a deficit. Opted to forego automatic pay raises provided to top public service in September. The mayor and the 48 others, they went and got their bag. Shout out to the bag chasers. Um, Records obtained by Block Club Chicago show Johnson has not rejected the pay raise alongside most aldermen. Uh, goes on to say that after wage increase tied with to inflation takes effect on January 2024, which has already passed, most city council members, including the 12 new aldermen, I can't believe it. Are you telling me? It pays to be a community leader. It pays to be a community leader. The aldermen will make $145,000. I did not know that public servant jobs paid this much money. Hey, who want to run to be an alderman in Chicago? No wonder they all out there scrambling, scrambling, gambling, up in restaurants with mandolins and violins. We just sit here trying to win, trying not to sin. High off weed and lots of gin. So much smoke, need oxygen. Said E. Connell and Benjamin. It's making you shit too. If you do, what this game would do to you? Been in it since 92. Look at all the books I've been through. So-called beef with you know who. A few female stars are too. They out here getting it in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> It's Brandon, 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 it's Brandon, 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 Alderman, and Brandon, Brandon, Alderman, and Brandon, Brandon. They out here getting it in Chicago. Oh, they getting it in Chicago.
Chicago. Shout out to the mayor and the aldermen. And here's what y'all got to look forward to when y'all leave office. Check it out. Some aldermen accepted a 9.6% pay raise tied to inflation. <laughs> what up, Messi? Listen, you know we're going to go off the rails on this show. This is a different type of show. If Johnson ultimately decided to accept his pay raise, which he is, he is a scheduled to, he is the first Chicago mayor to accept a salary increase, and he's making two. Hundred and twenty thousand dollars annually. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, but guess what? Guess what? If you become mayor, not only do you get a quarter million dollars a year, because let's be clear, Tiffany Henyard is making more than all of them. Listen. The mayor of Chicago, as much money as he's making to do a bad job, and the alderman in Chicago is making 145. The mayor is making 221. Tiffany Hingard is killing them all, and he's, she's of a small town. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Tiffany Hingard is killing them all, and then, and then, not only that, you then bring in Lori Lightfoot. They gave her a nice retirement package. We said, listen, not only. Was you going to make a lot of money to go ahead and run Chicago into the ground? We also going to give you $400 an hour. We're also going to give you $400. Let's say, for example, because she's going to build at her own rate, right? From a broke city that has a budget of only $30 million to run a whole city. Okay, cool. So let's assume for the sake of conversation that you work 40 hours a week, Right? You don't do any extra billing, but you're a consultant, so you're making 40 hours a week. 1099, may I ask? Absolutely. That means, on average, Lori Lightfoot is making $16,000 a week. And let's assume that she works at least a month. So we're going to multiply that times four. Lori Lightfoot is making $64,000 a month. Now, let's say that this investigation... Continues for a year, all right? Uh, 64,000 times 52 weeks in a year. Oh, I'm sorry, 12 months in a year. Lori Lightfoot will have fleeced the city of Dalton by way of trustees of $768,000 a year. Oh, my God. <laughs> What a heck of a retirement package. It pays to be a politician in Illinois. Claims Henyard has repeatedly denied. We have tried lawsuits. Uh, all he has done is uh, rack up more attorney's fees. And guess who's going to pay for it? The people who on average make less than $26,000 a year over there in Dalton. Did you know that the average adult is operating under the poverty line, making less than $30,000 a year while they're getting their taxes raised on them with an ice rink that can't nobody even check for or use and don't nobody even put ice skates on in the first place. And you guys are footing the bill of all of this foolishness, this is fool. Listen, man, wipe the whole slate clean, get everybody up out of there and start fresh. Start anew. Hiring uh, Mayor Lightfoot to do a uh, prompt in investigation will lead the board to where they need to go as to the next step. We feel this option will give us um, an independent process. Among other accusations made by the village trustees, that Henyard has allegedly overpaid some vendors and hired contractors without board approval. And we now seven million dollars plus in debt. We're bleeding right now, mm. and bleeding leads to death. Mm. And this is death of a community. Lightfoot will also be tasked with investigating claims of sexual misconduct that allegedly occurred during a trip to Las Vegas in May of last year, reportedly paid for in part with village funds. A former Dalton employee is accusing a board trustee of the assault. Motion passed. Monday night. And the people just. 
I think everybody in Dalton, every single person in Dalton, you deserve what you have. You deserve what you get. You all deserve this. This is your doing. Everything that you have, everybody that's in office, everybody that's making the decisions, your mayor, uh, the, the, everybody in Dalton deserves everything that Dalton gets. Do not ask for help. Do not ask for anything. I remember doing a live stream where the people were saying, oh my God, somebody please come and save Dalton. Save us from ourselves. Oh, my God. We are, we are suffering. Oh, my God. Save us from ourselves. We're drowning and we only have an ice rink to be able to go and skate on once the freeze comes over in Illinois over here in Dalton and then they went over there and they went and got Beetlejuice. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a reflection of the culture. This is a reflection of the culture. This is the things that we do when left up to our own devices, when we get our own cities, we get our own police force, we play identity politics, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We make sure that we enrich all of the public servants and all of the people is suffering as a result of it. You get ice rinks with no ice. You get skates with no blades. You get mares with no push. You get Vegas trips with bubblegum shrimp hats. It's all dumb. It's all dumb. And you deserve everything that you get. I'm going to just sit here and watch the show. From the comfort of my own studio, I'm going to just look at it and I'm going to be like, hmm, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. You deserve everything that you get over there in Illinois, Chicago, Dalton, Peoria, wherever it is that you are. We just going to watch it from a distance. The board also overriding Mayor Henyard's veto during a March meeting of a resolution to investigate her spending. Now, some Dalton residents question the hefty price tag that could come with appointing Lightfoot. The board says that it will reevaluate her work and check in with residents at the $30,000 mark. Lightfoot is expected mm. to start her investigation as so soon as tomorrow. Of course she's going to start tomorrow because then she can start billing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where they dig her up from? Where did they dig Lori Lightfoot? Hey, somebody get me on the phone with Lori Lightfoot so we can get an interview and see if we can get some understanding of what's going on over here. I, I need an interview ASAP. I need an interview ASAP. It's hard to do when you're making $16,000 a week, though. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Couldn't have made a better start to my morning. Faith M says, happy B-Day in advance. <laughs> AD sent you an email. I'm looking forward to my future call with you. I missed it for February. Enjoying the bag chasers. Uh, and uh, SC, by the way, shout out to Faith. Faith, I love you. I'm looking forward to giving you that call, baby. I'm looking forward to jumping on that phone call with you. Michael Moore says, Alderman and Brandon Brandon. <laughs> Alderman Dangerous. Ain't too many that can bang with us. Straight off, we know Angel us, label us, notorious. Woo, it's happening over there in Dalton. Ash, shout out to my dog, Ash. Says you got to pay to play. All right. Black people will never learn. You brought in Beetlejuice for $400 an hour. The FBI can do it for free. Dumb, da dum dumb. I'm running up all of them billing hours. I'm going to be just like Nathan Wade and Fawny Willis. Oh, we running it up. We running it up.
I'm going to be Nathan Wade out here in these streets running it up. All the hours is going to be billed. Absolutely. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even while I'm sleeping, I'm investigating. All right? But not to be outdone, not to be outdone, and I'll be reading Super Chats throughout the show, Brandon Johnson, they said, listen, guys, listen. We know that crime is rampant. We understand that people are getting shot walking their dogs down the street. We know that you can't go outside and you can't breathe. <laughs> you can't even go outside in Chicago and breathe in the cold air without a bit bullet whizzing past your head. But you know what we want? Hey, Eric Daniels. Eric Daniels, you know what they said that they wanted? $70 million more dollars. And what do they want it for? More migrant money. I'm not making this up. I know that y'all think that it's crazy, but these are y'all leaders. You know, when I had a conversation, not this past Monday, not the one that just happened last night, but the Monday before, and the people was trying to hold the ch church accountable. And I said, y'all don't even hold the people accountable that you already paying. You're paying for your aldermen. You're paying for your mayor. You're paying for your police force. You're paying for the treasurers. You're paying for the city council members. You're paying for all of these people to be working on your behalf. You're paying for the sanitation. You're paying for this. You're paying for that. And you are getting nothing. You're getting nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. You don't participate in the voting process. You don't participate in the thing that's best for you. You're paying for the schools. You're paying for the superintendent. You're paying for the teachers. You're paying for the police force. You're paying for the EMS. You're paying for infrastructure and services, good water. You're paying for everything, cement workers, people that fill the potholes, all of that. And you don't even know who the people are that you need to go through in order to serve. You don't even hold accountable the people that you pay your taxes to. And they raise them without any kind of problems whatsoever. Y'all go into these meetings and y'all cry out and you got immigrants and people that are here legally. And they say, I don't want people to come and build the city and take out all of the resources that we got going on here. And then they speak Spanish and they give it to you in English and they Spanish and they say, blah, 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 blah. and they do all of this stuff, right? And they finesse you. Over and over and over and over again, and you never learn a lesson. And y'all say, hey, we just going to keep on voting the way that we going to vote. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you, and I laugh at you, and I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious to see you suffer in your own city because this is the thing that you created for yourself. And then they come, listen, I'll show you. Shout out to the happy girl. I'm definitely going to be reading that super chat shortly. I'll show you. You want me to show you? You want me to show you? Okay, let me show you what's happening in Chicago. You don't believe that fat meat is greasy. Shout out to the happy girl. I'm going to be reading that super chat shortly. You don't believe fat meat greasy. And so I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what happens in your city in the daytime and the nighttime. And then I'm going to show you what your politicians going to do as a result of it. Watch this. You don't believe it? Watch it. Now we turn to breaking news. A 21-year-old woman is in the hospital this morning after a shooting in Uptown. CBS 2's Mugo Digwe is live at the scene with what we are learning from police at this hour. Good morning, Mugo. Yeah, good morning to you both. So we are on Sunnyside Avenue this morning. This is a residential area. Chicago police say the woman was on the sidewalk walking her dog when she was shot. Take a look at this video because we saw Chicago police officers in the area after the shooting investigating using flashlights basically to search for evidence. The shooting happened just after 1230 this morning. Again, the 21 year old woman was walking her dog on the sidewalk when a silver sedan pulled up. Police say someone in that sedan then fired shots at the woman. She was hit in her leg and rushed to St. Francis Hospital, but we're told she is expected to recover. But right now, the police is out there walking with the flashlight. Mugo can't get no sleep. M Mugo, whatever her name is, look, the police got the flashlight on. Hey, well, let's find the bullets with our iPhones. Let's see what's going on out here. Woman goes outside to walk her dog. Man just come back. <laughs> Hit her in the leg. Ah, dog is barking. <laughs> Everybody just died. 
Mugo can't get no sleep. That's why she's so stressed out. Y'all got this woman with veins all popping out of her neck. She don't know what to say no more. She's talking all day, talking all night. In Chicago, from site to site, space to space, place to place. Y'all going to run Mugo tad. She's tad, boss. Mugo, what else we got out here in these streets? Certainly a frightening experience for longtime Odyssey. The other black man. Remember him? Remember the other black man? He out here running the streets too. Him and Mugo. Where we going next, Mugo? Where we going next, Mugo? Patrons, their bartenders and managers, they tell me in 25 years they've never seen crime like this. They have surveillance video of the shooter being inside not even four minutes before two people are shot, one of them critically wounded. It's an isolated incident that um, we had no control over. Witnesses say a man was sitting at the bar. The gunman walks in and eventually hits the man in the head with a bottle. He then begins shooting. But no argument, nothing. It didn't seem like there was a com commotion before any of this. He walked, I guess he walked in. You could hear them pass words back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then it ju he just started shooting. Perry Wonder if it was over guacamole. The away on a stretcher. He was shot three times in the chest. This security guard was shot in the leg. This woman was cut by glass. Jesus Friday, Christ. Around 11 p.m. at the Odyssey Tavern, 211 East Garfield. About 30 patrons were inside at the time. Witnesses recall hearing more than 10 gunshots. First of all, if you go into any establishment let me show you something we're inside at the time Witness look at that door look at that door that's a house door that's the front door to your grandmama's house right there that is the front door to your grandmother's house right there if you go up to a bar and the front door look like the back door to your grandmother's house and you probably in the wrong place to be buddy yeah, it's some unsavory activity that could possibly hurt you. That it look, look at it. That's grandmama's house. No, that's the door to the bar. One way in, one way out. Everybody getting shot. Mama's dying, babies flying, glass landed in the baby's head. He got shot in the test chest three times. Other man got the ricochet bullet. Man, get out of here with this nonsense. This is recall hearing more than 10 gunshots. I want to come here. I'm 56 years old. Why would I work somewhere where I felt scared? With? It's home. We feel safe. We have fun. We have a good time. Not in Chicago. We, it's family. The Odyssey is home to many educators and law enforcement. Sources say the victim and gunman know each other and that the shooter had been seen at the bar previously. Jackie Welch, who's managed Odyssey for seven years now, says it was an isolated incident and they plan to increase security protocols. Now with blinds like that, you ain't. Who gonna do the security? The secure, didn't y'all just hear what he said? It said the security got shot. He shot the security guard too. <laughs> he came in there, hit my man over the head with the bottle, bing. Old girl was outside getting her dog shot, hit him over the head, hit him with the oop shebang. Let loose on the security guard, ricocheted over at the lady over on the side. We gonna increase security. What y'all gonna do, turn the blinds over? Look at the blinds. The blinds is from the crib. The door is from the crib. Everything is bad in Chicago. Businesses is, is failing. People getting their dog shot, all of that. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Chicago, Brandon Johnson said, we will not, we will not, under any circumstances, and I need you to hear me clearly, and I don't want you to misconstrue my words, okay? I don't want you to misconstrue my words. What we're going to do in Chicago is we're going to leave no migrant undocumented worker behind. In addition to giving them health care services, we're giving them schooling, we're contacting the archdiocese and we're expeditiously mathematically meticulously combing through to understand every single opportunity that we can ensure they get they get a work permit now we know we know that the biden administration is going to have uh, a fundraising event here 
And because of that, I and my administration are planning on going visiting Biden before he leaves. Now, we know that we have went to Washington. Everything that we've done, it's fallen on ears that are deafened, not deaf ears, ears that are deafened. OK, and I need the media and all the churches and the constituents and everybody <laughs> and everybody that's <laughs> and, every, and everybody <laughs> and everybody that supports what we <laughs> Oh, this is like a horrible movie that we in. I would think that I was in a dream if it wasn't so profitable, Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see what, look, listen, hear it for yourself. Hear it for yourself. But Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson is now ready to agree to a deal with the state and county. He is now getting ready to ask Chicago Alderman to approve $70 million more for the migrant crisis. Hear it for yourself. After giving themselves raises and promotions, not balancing the budget because they knew it was going to be wrong. We said that the budget was going to be wrong. And now he plans to go and ask Chicago Alderman for $70 million more. Listen, we're not talking about $70,000, not $7,000, not $7, $70 million more dollars on top of the hundreds of millions of dollars that they already are sourcing from the time. Hey, they asking an alderman like it's the alderman's money. That's your money. This is your money. Hey, alderman, can I get $70 million more of the taxpayer's money? Love C. Can I get more of Love C's money? Can I get more of their money over there? Can I get some more of your money? We don't even own our own streets, but let me get some more of your money. We're going to give it out to the migrant crisis because we're not going to leave any migrant behind. Alderman will be briefed on the details later on this week. Political reporter Marion Ahern was the first to report this development. In early February, Governor Pritzker left City Hall after meeting with Tony Preckwinkle and Mayor Brandon Johnson to find a three-way funding deal for the migrant crisis. The state will be asking the General Assembly to approve $182 million, the county $70 million. But days later, the mayor said no to the city's share of $70 million, despite initially agreeing. He defiantly would not explain why he backed out. So you're making an assertion that I made a promise. Were you at that meeting? I told you that's exactly how he talked. So, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. So you're making an assertion that we made a promise. Were you at the meeting? You know, I'm tired. I'm tired of the media portraying this thing to be anything other than what I've described as such. So you're making an assertion, huh? <laughs> so you're making an assertion. You're accusing me of something that I didn't say or do. Were you at the meeting? Were you at the meeting? Listen to him. He's, he's saying exactly what I've been telling y'all. The whole time before he even got on the screen, listen to him. Why he backed out. So you're making an assertion that I made a promise. Were you at that meeting? Today, two months later, Chicago aldermen are being told the city will kick in its share, that $70 million. And the fact that the, the, the governor is willing to put up some money as well as President Preckwinkle, I think it's only right that we have the ability to put up some funding as well. It follows a troubling pattern where... The mayor's office seems to not collaborate with us in city council and then does something and then we have to clean it up on the back end. Both Alderman Conway and Villalegas expect the mayor will be using COVID funds. The city, according to published reports, has used about 30 percent of the total 1.9 billion federal COVID funds. I had drafted an ordinance that would would allow for more city council oversight over ARPA funds. That, despite being supported by a majority of council, it was, of course, uh, derailed to the Rules Committee. Alderman will be briefed Wednesday and Thursday on the mayor agreeing to now, yes, kick in the $70 million for the migrant crisis. And since the 2024 budget was already approved, this will take a separate full council vote. And more, more money out of the hands of the taxpayers 
and given over to a bunch of people that's going to then use it irresponsibly and not do the thing that's in the best interest of the people. But as usual, I, like I said that I was going to do, I'm going to stay on top of it. I'm going to make sure that you guys stay informed of what's happening out in these streets. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad, bad. It's absolutely bad. And they running amok and they making a mockery of y'all and they making y'all look bad and it's unfortunate. Michael Moore says, Lordy Palpatine Lightfoot, Chicago is the empire. Yes. Happy Girl One says a laptop. Oh, thank you, Happy Girl One, for the super stick. I appreciate you. We're definitely going to put that to use. Hopefully, we can get a coffee. I, I really do appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Lott, Shadbrook, comedy. Ha, ha, ha. Comedy you want. Okay. Well, comedy you shall get. Yes. Fifth M says she's, I mean, they're doing Beetlejuice too. Ah. Faith, you would like to see another version of Beetlejuice. I would like to see uh, the old version of Beetlejuice stay the way that it was. But apparently, we are going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, Bam, Flackle, shout out to Bam. I haven't seen you in a couple of days, Bam. What have you been? I live in Chicago. Ah, so you're the one that's helping to fund this migrant crisis. Okay, going out late night is hazardous, to say the least. Okay, Bam. Okay, Bam. <laughs> Sharik43 said, don't forget the guns the migrants get. Ah. So the migrants get Uzis with switches on them. Okay. Okay. All right. We're definitely going to hold them accountable. Ronnie J says V here. Shout out to V. <laughs> v here just saying good afternoon. What's up, Ronnie? V. I'd appreciate you, V. Thank you for topping in on the Milton and Mayor Morning Show. Uh, the name is Joe. Hello, Joe. Says, uh, your Brandon Johnson impersonation is spot on. Thank you, Joe. Joe, without you, there would be no me. There would be no I. Without you, there would be no I. <laughs> Ah, uh, Edmund. Ah, my good sir, Edmund. Says, greetings, Anton. Seems Mugo getting all the overtime in Shiraka and to the shy. Ah, Mugo. We like Mugo. Mugo is a very attractive woman in Chicago. She's being overworked. Uh, but we like Mugo. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. We got a lot to go over today. Uh, I want to go back to the crime, okay? I would like to go back to the crime because there's crime all over. I keep getting it on my algorithm, and we need to hold these people accountable, and I keep telling y'all that there's some stuff that we need to pray against. It's so much crime, I had to lead off the show with prayer. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. They don't want to talk about it, but it's important for us to have a conversation about it. Did y'all know that in Vegas that a domestic dispute between former law partners caused the person to come in there, bam, bam, hit two people in the chest, one in the hip, take them out, make sure they emptied the clip. That's a bar. Yes, 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 this happened. Join me. People that had been in the deposition were there screaming and upset, and so they told us there is a shooter in their office. It's terrifying, you know. Um, we're all just going to work on a Monday. Shots ring out at a law office in Summerlin, leaving a prominent lawyer and his wife dead. Nevada Attorney General Aaron Ford sharing that the victim, Dennis Prince, was his former law partner, friend, and, quote, a brilliant attorney. The shooter identified as another attorney who opened fire during a deposition involving the two victims. They were on opposing sides of that deposition over child custody. Mm. Only a few minutes into the testimony, witnesses say the shooter pulled out a gun, shot across the table, and killed his former daughter-in-law and her new husband. They wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, because this is getting messy. Former law partners 
killed his former daughter-in-law and her new husband, who happened to be a lawyer, and his wife during a deposition inside of a law office. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold off. Rhonda Poole, let's get some thugging up up in it. You telling me that a domestic dispute, a quarrel amongst people, somebody getting some box, somebody not getting some box, and that could cause for you to take somebody's life. You know, I always wonder how domestic disputes turn so disputive, I don't know if that's a word or not, but so turn so disputive to where you would actually take somebody else's life as a result of it. You said how they getting in with the gun? It was a law office, it was a deposition. It was a deposition. Thank you, DJ Ace Productions. I would like my $30 million, please. I would like my $30 million, please. Let me revise it. Let me rewind this a little bit because I'm trying to understand this entirely. This is a, a very, very difficult thing. He said, father got custody courtesy of his daddy smoked. Oh, man, this is crazy. Deposition involving the two victims. They were on opposing sides of that deposition over child custody. Only a few minutes into the test. Child custody. Child custody. Testimony, witnesses say the shooter pulled out a gun, shot across the table, and killed his former daughter-in-law and her new husband. Child custody killed his former daughter-in-law and her new husband. Say that he then turned the gun on himself. He was representing his son in the custody dispute. Police say by the time that they entered the building, all three were dead. Wait a minute. Okay, so the lawyer is facing his former law partner. And I'm assuming, now, again, make sure you guys keep me informed because I'm, I'm a C student, so I'm trying to put this together. He's representing his son in a deposition against his former wife who happened to be his daughter-in-law. This is the shooter. His daughter-in-law, who's being represented by her former husband, this is crazy. This is messy. And you see how this happens? You see how this happens? What happens is stuff get messy. People start busting out people they're not supposed to. Now you, you in a custody battle and dispute. You sit across the table, and we don't know what was said, what was happening, but all we know is that it's three bodies in there. Two of them is the people that were sitting across the table. One of them was turned on itself. That's crazy. That's insane. Your law partner is the new husband. And the woman that's married to... This is crazy. The patient has to agree to waive any privacy rights and basically hold the facility harmless. Fox 5 interviewed local attorney Dennis Prince of the Prince Law Group last June about the right to put cameras in nursing homes. Monday morning, inside his law firm, he and his wife Ashley Prince were shot and killed. Mm. The suspect, also a local attorney, Joe Houston, Ashley's former father-in-law. So Ashley was a city girl and she wind up talking to his former partner who divorced his son. His son lost his wife to his former partner. You know, now you see why I say never mix business with pleasure. Never start talking to somebody that you don't introduce her to your this is why women was kept in the house. This is why women was kept in the house. This is why women was prevented from working because they wanted to do the thing that was, they didn't want you breaking up your family for the for granddad's partner. And y'all went and got married and now you sitting across the table and you smiling and you grinning. <laughs> Some people can't take that. Some people can't take it. The dad was like, oh man, this is breaking me up. It's breaking my heart. You telling me my grandchildren is going to be sitting here being raised by my former partner in the law firm? Think about it. Look, 
You my man's a hundred grand. We came up in law school together. We go and we graduate and we get money and we get in money. Yeah, we tricking on these hoes, making sure we throw all the money in the air. Like we don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like we came up together. I know you. I know you a scumbag. Oh, so you gonna take my son's wife from me? You gonna take my son's wife and we gonna sit here in the desperate deposition across the table and you talking salty to me? So wait a minute. You gonna marry my son's ex-wife and you sitting here in the deposition of the custody battle? And you my man's hundred grand. We used to be throwing money in the strip club together. So that means that you ain't just marry her out the blue. You took her from me and you bust her down. You been busting down my son's wife. And now my grandchildren are supposed to be sitting here calling you daddy? <laughs> you crazy. This is what it was. This is what's being described. And so he said, I can't take it. Do, 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 do. I can't take it. I can't take it. You telling me you had my son's wife in your office late night? When you were supposed to be charging billable hours over to this person and you was over here busting down my ex. I'm telling you, people can't take it. The game is the game. The ga it's a mess out here. Listen to what they telling you. See, they not going to tell you the way I'm telling you. I'm going to break it down from a real person's perspective. Oh, you busting out my son's ex-chick? Son was probably, oh, my God, Dad, I can't take it. I don't know. <laughs> Family court was over there running amok. What is he supposed to do? Fox 5 has learned that Houston's son was previously married to Ashley. Ugh. After her divorce, she later married Dennis. Oh. He was representing her in the custody dispute. Oh. The deposition was taking place on the- Hey, you gonna take my kids from me? floor of the City National Bank building. Police say that there were seven people in the room for the deposition, three on each side, and a court reporter. The four others all escaped unharmed. The entire building evacuated after the deadly shooting. And the Prince Law Group shared this statement with Fox 5 with profound sadness. Prince Law Group would like to thank everyone who reached out to us with heartfelt messages of concern and sympathy over the tragic violence that occurred this morning in our office. That's crazy. That's insane. Absolutely insane. But, but check it. It's not just happening. Listen, the insanity is not just existing in one space. The ins insanity is existing everywhere. Vegas, Florida... Check out this next story. Listen to this. You see this man right here? You see this woman right here? That's the son. This is a, this is a completely different story. I'm showing you what the insanity is inside of society while we need to turn back to God, while we need to turn back to our principles, while we need to turn back to our morals. We keep trying to remix life and say that, no, we're going to do it differently. No, this is the new time. No, you want to do the new math. We're going back to the old math. We don't need to even be talking about calculus right now. We need to be talking about one plus one equal two. One plus one is supposed to be equal to two. You want to talk about rise over run and what's the slope and the y-axis. and then We not talking about geometry, calculus. We're not doing none of that. You want to solve for why? I'm just saying that we need to get back to the basics. One plus one equal two. Not you and your, pro your husband and your partner opening up your relationship. We don't need to do none of that. You don't need no more crazy therapists out here like the one that I debated on Harley Initiated. And he over here talking about, oh, my God, we need to make sure that we qualify for all emotions, even if you decide to be a part of the alphabet. We don't need none of that. No more. We need to get back to the core of who we are. Basics. Basics. Y equal MX plus B. Yes. Rise over run. What is B? What is the Y? X axis. Rise over run. What's the slope? Huh? Check out this story. Check this out. First shocking new details just released in the case of a Polk County man accused of killing his own mother. 
This is 10 Tampa Bay at 6. I'm Dave Wagner. And I'm Carolina Lead. Investigators say 21 year old pre med student Emmanuel Espinoza confessed to stabbing his mother, Elvia, more than 70 times. It happened Saturday afternoon in Frostproof. And now the sheriff's office has released the 911 call Emmanuel made moments later and doorbell video showing the knife they say he used. 10 Tampa Bay's Angelicia Bruton spoke with their family about what happened here. Angelicia, walk over with the some big question glasses. now is what was the motive? Dave, the why is still uncertain. Investigators say they don't know why Emmanuel Espinosa did this, and his family says the same thing. They say Elvia Espinosa was a loving mother and didn't deserve this. Hmm. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd says 21 year old Emmanuel Espinosa killed his mother Saturday and then called 911. Hmm. I want you to understand she was really the perfect mom. I want you to understand that she was very proud of his accomplishments in going to the University of Florida, graduating number one in his high school class. Mm. Graduated number one in his high school class. You don't know what these people got going on. You don't know what kind of demons they got going on behind the scenes. These people are unhinged. And then I want you to understand that he viciously murdered her and confessed to it. Emmanuel told investigators he and his mother spoke every other day and that he loved her, but admitted sometimes she also irritated him. Emmanuel said his mother missed him and asked him to come visit. He mm. agreed and said he drove to her frostproof home from Gainesville to stab and kill her, something Emmanuel told investigators he wanted to do for years. He made the statement that he knew where to stab her for maximum effect because of his biology classes. So what kind of mom was she? Um, she was an amazing mom. Um, she was all, always full of life. She was always encouraging. Um, she was our biggest supporter. Mary Solongo is the oldest of Elvia's three children who spoke to us today via phone. The biggest lesson I think is to um, trust God and she taught me how to be a great mother. And sister. She spent many years in Polk County schools. Students and teachers wore bright colors to honor her vibrant spirit. We thank the community so much for coming together and just showing her how much she was loved. Mary Soul says their support is really helping their family during this difficult time. I know she's smiling down and just smiling at all the support that we have. Angelicia, this is uh, really a shocking tragedy here. Has the family spoken with Emmanuel, do you know, since this happened? Yeah, Dave, the family did not want to comment on Emmanuel, but they did tell me he was the valid Victorian at his high school and he did not get there on his own. They say he was able to accomplish that with the love and support of his family, including his mother. Valedictorian. Mother still loving on you. Hey, I miss you, son. Why don't you come over there and see me? Meanwhile, he over there saying, man, I just been wanting to kill my mom for months. Just randomly, just I want to kill my mother. They asked him, they said, hey, man, why'd you go over there and stab your mother? It's like, man, you know what? She just kind of was getting on my nerves right now. Y'all better pray. I know that y'all think that y'all can go out here and survive on your own. But guess what? Even if you have a level of sanity in you, you may be standing and riding right next to the person that sent Chipotle that's mad at guacamole. Or you may be riding next to the person that's holding on to a knife and he about to go and kill his mother. Or you may be kicking it and having a conversation in the parking lot with Home Depot of a woman that's busting down her ex-partner's or, or her father-in-law's ex-partner and then having him represent her inside of a deposition and she don't even realize that she about to go over there and piss somebody off and this guy's about to take his own life and take her life as a result of it. You don't know. You don't know. You can't control other people. You don't know how unhinged these people are. Sometimes y'all walk in and y'all shake hands. You shake hands with a man that's full of the devil or a woman that's full of demons. I'm telling you, spirits are real. Those, man, those very same spirits leap off into you and you surround yourself by it and you listen to it all day and you consume it. And this is one of the reasons why we have the Millionaire Morning Show. The Millionaire Morning Show is important 
because I would like to get y'all day started off right so that you have the ammunition to be able to fight off this stuff every single week. That's why we start off the week so on fire. Mondays and Tuesdays, we lit. Because I know that y'all went through something over the weekend. You've been fighting demons and devils all week long. All week long. It's crazy. Absolutely, positively crazy. Read a couple of super chats and we're going to move over. We got to get to Trump. We got to get to the money. We got a lot to go over. DJ Ace Production says, Anton, you got the Trevor Noah going on. Political commentary with humor and the chat. Hilarious. <laughs> Shout out to my dog, DJ Ace. I appreciate you, big dog. Ash. You know, Ash be over the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ash says, this is exactly how feminism has destroyed families. This is exactly why the Arab world has it correct and their women are on lock and key lockdown. Real talk. Oh, you get it. You get it, Rhonda. That's why I'm girded up. Shout out to my dog, Ash. I'm girded up with my breastplate of righteousness. No holes in my armor. You can't stab me. Ah, you can't stab me. No, you can't. All right, let's continue on with the show. Oh, we already did that one. So, I want to give you guys an update. We got to go political really quickly. Really quickly. Just quick. We're going to only spend 10 minutes. Let's see, it's 116. By 126 p.m. Eastern, I want to be done with this story. I want to be done with this one. Now, there's legal woes, more legal woes that's piling up for the president. Um, and then on top of that, he's recently released a statement about his stance on abortion. Now, why is this important and why is this relevant? Because this is the very thing that Democrats are standing on in order to try to sway you to vote a certain way. Now, Anton from AntonDaniels.com, I have my stance on the way that I'm going to vote. I'm a little bit more conservative. And uh, I think that the policies and the ways in which these two presidents in which we have at least four years of both of them being in office to evaluate who did the best job, Trump before him, Biden after. Now, we know that the four most important things to Americans are what? Housing. Nobody wants to be homeless. More people are be becoming homeless every single day. We keep modifying and saying, oh, we live in van life or we living in a tiny home. No, ma'am, you, you, you're homeless. You're taking a shower inside of the gym. You're washing up, and then you're going to use the bathroom overnight inside of the Walmart, okay? It's called homelessness. That's the first thing. Number two, migrant crisis. That is another important thing that people are really, really concerned about when it comes to what is happening here in the United States of America. People want to know what's going on and why are our borders open to people to just coming in here, okay? That's the number two thing that people are really, really concerned about. Number three, inflation. The cost of living, your ability to be able to take care of yourself, make sure that you can take care of yourself in, a, in the face of an emergency. Car notes is going up, interest rates are high, house notes are high, rent is high, food is high, and people, even when they get a raise, they don't like the idea that their money doesn't seem to go any further. And this is one of the reasons that you want to tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. And number four, relationships, right? People want to know that they can find somebody that can share in their life joys and then they don't want to leave them. But at the same time, they want to find love. Now, love has nothing to do with politics. You can use it to have a conversation about single parent households or whatever. But these are the four things that I found in my journey of doing a Millionaire Morning Show, having conversations across the board that people are absolutely concerned about. Again, relationships that has nothing to do with politics. Has a little bit to do with politics, but nothing as a result of what it is that you're going to vote for. Relationships, inflation, migrant crisis, housing. The fundamentals of what is important to Americans. But you know what they're walking around having a conversation about, especially on the liberal side? Oh, my God. Abortion, Roe v. Wade, Supreme Court. We want to make sure that the states is going to have the ammunition that they need in order to allow for you to go into Planned Parenthood. This is the thing, because they know that it's emotional for you, that they can tap into your emotions, then they can sway you to vote a certain type of way and keep you distracted 
from the things that's really meaningful to you that can actually change your life. Why is abortion not important to most people? Or to some people, it's a little bit more important. Well, for me, it's not important because I know that I can control whether or not a woman is going to have an abortion by controlling myself. So I'm not concerned about something that I have control over myself. I'm controlled over things that I don't have control over. Okay? That's important to me. So it then forced uh, one presidential candidate, Trump, to make a statement about where he stood on abortion, and we're going to review that. But before we get into that, we're first going to give you a little bit of a summary and an update because we haven't Trump talked about Trump in a while. We're going to give you a little bit of an update on what's going on with his legal woes, where he stands on that, and then we're going to look at what his statement was with regard to abortion. Make sure that you guys hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. If you have not shared this with your family and friends, you are very, 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 very much robbing them of the great experience that you have waking up every single morning and having this conversation with us. Chat lives matter. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I appreciate everybody that support the platform. I'm going to continue to read uh, Super Chats throughout the show. And then last but not least, make sure you guys tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's get to it. Jury selection for Donald Trump's hush money case begins next week, and the pool of jurors is expected to fill out a lengthy questionnaire. They'll be asked a range of things from if they listen to certain podcasts to if they follow groups like QAnon, that movement. Good Day's Briella Tomasetti is here now with the latest on what we can expect next week and the former president's latest efforts to postpone that trial. Briella, good morning. Yeah, Dan and Tashani, looks like that's not happening. Former President Donald Trump's hush money case is the first of his four criminal indictments slated to go to trial, and this would be historic, the first criminal trial ever of a former president. Jury selection is slated to begin on April 15th, but as in any case, jurors will have to set aside their personal feelings and render a decision based on the evidence and the law. A New York appeals court judge has decided that Donald Trump's hush money trial will not be postponed. Justice Lizbeth Gonzalez handed down the ruling after hearing from Trump's lawyers and the Manhattan DA's office, which charged him with 34 counts of falsifying business records related to alleged hush money payments to porn star Stormy Daniels. <laughs> the former president, who has pleaded not guilty to all counts, made a last-ditch effort to delay the trial as he fights to move the case out of Manhattan. He is suing Judge Juan Mershon, asking for a change in venue just one week before jury selection is scheduled to begin. Let me say this. Getting yourself involved with somebody and then letting your past come to haunt you could never be more of a, a man thing. That is the gift that keeps on giving. This happened in the Jonathan Majors. This happened in the Trump. I mean, who would have thought that Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels, would be sitting at the forefront of the congregation during an election year in 2024 we're still talking about Stormy Daniels. I mean, Stormy Daniels. Still having a conversation about Stormy Daniels. In a separate filing, Trump challenged his gag order on the case. Mershon recently expanded that gag order after Trump lashed out at his daughter, a Democratic political consultant on Truth Social. Mershon announced yesterday that prospective jurors will be asked if they've ever worked for the Trump campaign, whether they've ever attended a Trump rally, and whether they follow the former president on social media. <laughs> Meanwhile, special counsel Jack Smith, who was appointed in 2022 to investigate Trump's alleged role in working to overturn the 2020 election results, is urging the Supreme Court to reject the former president's claim that he is immune from criminal prosecution. In a 66-page filing, Smith argued that there are no presidential powers which would entitle Trump to immunity. The Supreme Court agreed to hear that case the week of April 22nd. So, essentially, um, the most prosecuted president in the history of presidential candidates is uh, going to be facing another trial while he's also campaigning in order to be president of the United States. Um, and then more importantly, I think that w the, the real conversation here is not just the prosecution, but a juror's inability to be impartial so that he can have a fair trial. It's not possible. It's not possible for a juror to be, Im to be impartial. Every single person that I've ever met in my entire life 
that has ever spoken for or against Trump absolutely positively had strong feelings one way or the other. I don't think it's possible to have a fair trial amongst the jury of your peers in which people are basically impartial towards whatever it is that you are, especially in Manhattan, especially in Manhattan. So we'll keep an eye on that, but let's switch over really quickly and let's get a statement and his take on abortion. And in order to do that, I wanted to go into a completely different, different platform. As you know, I like to source my stuff from different platforms to get different perspectives uh, in order to be able to have this conversation. To one of the most heated issues in the upcoming election, abortion policy. Former President Donald Trump officially announcing his stance on Truth Social today. In a video post, he said abortion should be left up to the states and did not mention a nationwide ban. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. The decision angered both sides of the aisle. Pro-life advocates have been pushing for a federal abortion ban. Meanwhile, abortion proponents believe more should be done to protect the procedure. So essentially, his position is it's not up to him as a political, um, from a political perspective, it is up to each individual state and their governors and their legislature uh, to determine whatever the abortion laws are in their state. And so I don't really understand why that's a problem. How does it anger people on both sides of the aisle? He's saying, listen, that's up to your individual state and your individual governors to determine what's best for your state. Some people feel a certain type of way. Some people feel the other type of way. And if you are a person that lives in a more conservative state, it's going to go one way. If you're a person that lives in a more liberal state, it's going to go the other way. I'm trying to understand why this is such a polarizing topic. You know, this is one of the rare topics. This is one of the rare topics that I don't have a position on. I genuinely don't. For almost every single other topic that comes up, whether it's political, whether it's blackity black, whether it's whitey white, is whitey white a thing? whether it's financial, relationship-wise, I have an opinion and a strong position on it. I'm either white or I'm black on a position, one way or another, for or against, it is what it is. This is the one thing. I remember when they had that whole thing with the Supreme Court a little while ago and they was talking about Roe v. Wade and stuff, and they was like, yo, this is so important or whatever. And for some reason, it just didn't bother me because I was thinking to myself, That doesn't affect me. I've never, ever in my life had to make sure that I go and ran and got a plan B, um, that I had to do this, that I had to do that. Not one time in my entire life was I ever affected by what was going on with regard to abortion. Just wasn't a thing. Wasn't even a consideration. Because I knew that I controlled my own seed. I knew that I controlled my own seed. So it just wasn't something that I'm going to be... If I'm going to make a decision about who's going to be the president of the United States of America, abortion rights is not going to be on the ballot for me. And I don't understand why it's on the ballot for anybody else. I'm, honestly, I'm just genuinely curious. For people that are passionate about this, why are you passionate about it? And I'm just trying to understand it. I know that it's a polarizing topic, but I just, I don't get it. I genuinely don't get it. I don't understand why this is a thing, why this is so meaningful to people. How does this determine, how does this determine who's going to be president of the United States? See, for me, it's just more pressing issues. It's, some, it's more pressing issues for me. Yes, my stance is about discipline. 100%. 100%. If I get a woman pregnant, <laughs> which we know that that's impossible, because Anton got the snip, snip. I got this snip, snip. If I was to ever get a woman pregnant, it's got to be an immaculate conception. It's an immaculate conception. But anyways, that's the latest news up on Trump. And uh, let me read a couple of Super Chats. And then I also want to read a Cash App really quickly. And then we'll go over into the final segment of the show, which we got to get and talk about money. 
Monet. Highly offensive. Shout out to you for the five ball. I appreciate you for holding me down, my dog. Uh, Canelius Jackson. Shout out to Canelius Jackson. Says that's why they put her in charge of the investigation. So R can spread money around Tiffany. Been hogging it to herself. They all crooked. Do y'all think that it's any good politicians? I think it's some. I think it's some positive politicians. Seminole 2014 says, it's not only that spirits are real, spirits don't die. The human body can, but the spirit just jumps off from one body to the next. Uh, Allah Jesus, Allah Jesus Jesus, casting spirits house is crazy, man, and they went to pigs. Yeah, I remember that. Shout out to my dog, Michael. Also, on Cash App, I appreciate you, Michael. And then Seminole 2014, thank you, Michael, for holding me down. I appreciate you, big dog. You are absolutely 100% appreciated on this show. And then my dog, Cornelius Jackson, says, said, when did a medical procedure become a right? I don't know. I have no clue. No clue whatsoever. Look at this. Wall Street Journal just dropped a new uh, article. Let me see if I can pull that up really quickly. Um, news, Wall Street Journal. Here we go. Just 12 minutes ago. Says Wall Street Journal, Arizona Supreme Court revives. Here, let me share my screen with you guys really quickly. So you can see what I see. Can you see what I see? Arizona Supreme Court revives 160-year-old abortion ban. Decision will put abortion front and center in a 2024 election or presidential race in a swing state. Literally, just this happened 12 minutes ago today. Arizona's highest court on Tuesday revived 100 of abortion in Arizona has been allowed through 15 weeks of pregnancy under a law that state legislature passed in 2022 shortly. And listen, man, it's just so much, so much every single day. Every day is something about... I almost feel like this is, I believe this is like being fed to us to try to get us to feel a certain way about it. Anyways, uh, last but not least, I went a little bit over. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let me get that last super chat up in here. My dog Ash says, uh, facts. I agree with Trump. Bo abortion is not a federal issue. It's personal. But the Democrats want the citizens to pay for people. Elective surgery, a.k.a. abortion. It's a personal issue. I'm, I'm just not involved in it. Like, I've never been in a situation where I had to have a position on abortion as it, as it relates to or affects my life in particular. So, I don't know. I'm a little bit different on that. But let's continue. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, uh, California's 99-cent stores, uh, they saying that it's being affected by a lot of the legislature and the little, little laws that's happening over there or whatever, so on and so forth. So this is the thing. I almost tried to avoid having this conversation because I've never really been in a 99-cent store. I've been in a dollar store. You know what I'm saying? Never been in a 99-cent store before. Been in Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Is a 99-cent store even in Michigan? Is that a thing? Is it okay to even have a 99 cent store with inflation going up the way that it's been going up? Anyways, uh, and then Walmart is also continuing to remove kiosks in certain cities because they're saying that the theft rate is going up. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Uh, let's talk about the 99 cents only stores closing all 371 locations, including 17 in the Valley. The discount chain 99 cents only stores announced it is shutting down all of its locations, citing rising costs and theft. Employees and shoppers at a local location say that they are left in a tight spot. Fox 5's Mike Allen brings us the reaction. Yeah, all 371 of the 99 cents only stores in California, Texas, Arizona, and here in Nevada are closed. Oh, so they all pretty much on the West Coast and there's a couple down South. California, Texas, Nevada, and uh, and where else did he say? California, Texas, Nevada, and one of the ninety-nine cents only stores in California, Texas, Texas, Arizona, and here in Nevada. Arizona. Okay, I got it. Uh, are closing down, and for employees and shoppers here at this location on Charleston and Maryland, that came as a big surprise. I actually found out through email. 
Tanika Rosario, who's been working at the 99 cent store on Maryland and Charleston for a year now, says she was taken aback by the sudden announcement that her location was closing. It's hurtful because we're a family here. Rosario thought it was only this location closing down and that she'd be able to keep her job at another location nope. in the valley. But the single mom soon learned that was not the case and was also disappointed to hear the lack of a package for laid off employees. We'll get some kind of stipend. Just nah, baby, you can go to the unemployment office, tell them that Anton from Anton Daniel sent you and you will not be able to transfer to a new store. You can go and get a job at McDonald's. <laughs> And they are paying $20 an hour until they replace you with kiosks, of course. Uh, but you can go and get a job at Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, Domino's, all of those places, even though I think that the resumes in those places are piling up. That's what they're telling me out here in these streets, man. But no, you don't get no severance package. You don't get none of that, baby. This is not corporate America. This is 99 cents, though, okay? To hold us over until we can find something new? Nope. And then today we were told something different. Yep. She calls the Senate announcement a slap in the face for not just her and her co-workers. We have a great group here. We do. I, I can't, hands down, best people I've ever worked with. But mm. the shoppers she's befriended as well. All our customers know us by face, by name, by everything. Oh, you know by name. You know, people's like, right here. <laughs> hey, you my baby. Don't worry, honey. <laughs> we got you. Many of those shoppers. They fit. Um, and more than a niche, they fit a need for most of the public. Sharing the same sentiments as Rosario. I'm distraught. I'm distraught. A lot of people are going to be hurting. They're going to be upset. The company has not provided a timeline for when these stores are going to close or how many employees nationwide are going to lose their jobs. Have y'all noticed that there's been like, you don't see a lot of new places opening up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't see a lot of mom and pop spots. You don't see a lot of big box stores opening up locations. You don't see new grocery stores. You don't see new small businesses. You don't see any of that, right? I don't see a lot of it, and I travel everywhere. And I travel over and over to places, but as I travel to different places, what I start to see is it seems like places starting to close, but there's nothing to replace it. So now what happens? In a lot of places, you have developers that are buying up the land, and then they raise it. And then if the if the environment is viable or they think that they can actually get something from it, then they build out a new place that basically allows for them to be able to make money off of housing and real estate. But I don't see places really replacing anything that they got going on anymore. Everything is closing. Is it different in Oklahoma City? Y'all got new Starbucks that's opening up in certain places? The economy is shrinking due to, due to the depression being reframed as a recession. I only see places closing. I don't see any places that's really opening up, especially on a mass scale. I don't see any places really opening up anymore. It's crazy. It's really, really crazy. But on the flip side, Walmart is making some adjustments. So now y'all can go and get some new jobs at Walmart. Check out what they're doing because too many people are stealing. And so now y'all force them to take out the technology. And so it's a war. Walmart at Steelyard Commons is removing its self-checkout kiosks. The retailer says that decision was made because of store shopping patterns and does not specify if it's related to crime. News 5's Bryn Caswell found out what customers think and if this is now becoming a trend. Self-checkouts will no longer be available at Walmart and Steelyard Commons. Walmart spokesperson Charles Croson said starting Sunday, Walmart will begin removing all self-checkout lanes, shifting to all associate staff checkouts. This frightens shopper Leah Birchnell, who says she likes to get in and out of that Walmart as fast as possible. I'll probably end up going to a different Walmart then because I don't like to have to wait down here, especially with all, all the crime that's been going down here. It's very scary. It really is. In a statement, Croson said the change was driven by Walmart's commitment to improve the in-store experience and the decision was made by customer and associate feedback, including research related to store shopping patterns and business needs within the market.
I made a mistake and hit the button. I'm sorry. Thank, this is why chat lives matter. This got mute button got me lit. So listen, listen, listen. This is what I was saying. Long story short, thank you, Yukar. I appreciate you also. And thank you to everybody in the chat. Long story short, uh, basically Walmart is removing all of the kiosks because I see it, I see it. Y'all a little bit delayed. Walmart is removing a kiosk because there's too many people stealing. Flat out. There's too many people stealing and running up the bag. I remember when I first, when I very, 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 very first uh, started seeing self-checkouts. Long, long time ago, right? And I walked by and I glanced over at a lady and I seen uh, her screen. And it looked like she was doing better than everybody else. I said, what? How's this happening? But I figured out her finesse. I figured out her finesse. You know how I figured out her finesse? I figured out her finesse because she got tackled at the front door. <laughs> I figured out her finesse because she got tackled at the front door. And so as I was watching her tack watching them tackle her at the front door, it used to be different back in the day. You could tackle somebody and, and get away with it, not have no problems, not get arrested, not get sued. You used to be able to tackle somebody at the front door. And so when I talked to the loss prevention person, I was walking out being nosy. I said, man, what is going on over there? I said she was ringing everything up as bananas. That's a fact. This is a true story. I said, what? He said, yeah, man. He said she was ringing up everything as bananas. I said, say it ain't so. Is that why her bill was only $12, even though she got $200 worth of stuff inside of her stuff? I said, no, she ain't. No, she don't. Doop. Set it on there. Bananas. Y'all got to stop ringing stuff up as bananas. Listen, everything is not a banana. Cheapest thing you can find in the store. Boop. Bananas. Stop ringing stuff. That is the oldest finesse in the book. I learned that when I seen her get tackled at the front door. I said, y'all not about to be messing up my future uh, by having me getting arrested by stealing bananas inside of the Walmart. No, you not. No, you not. I said, I'm about to be on the Millionaire Morning Show. I'm going to be a YouTube star. Woo! And what would that look like if y'all looked me up and said, how is he supposed to be a millionaire? They already be coming after you anyway, but then they look you up and they say, oh, no, Anton got arrested for, for retail theft, for bananas at the Walmart. Not going to happen. Y'all got to think about y'all futures. Y'all genuinely got to think about y'all futures. Y'all so focused on your circumstance. Listen, if you poor now, hear me out. For everybody that's watching this and that's not a bag chaser, if you're not a part of the Patreon and you haven't been running it up and you didn't look at Stock Club and you didn't look at Interview Like a King, and you don't understand the mastermind sessions, and you didn't look at what I do from a real estate perspective, and you're not taking advice, and you didn't join the Discord, the link is in the Discord, uh, attached to any of the most recent videos inside of the Patreon, in the description box. If you're not a bag chaser, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. This is what I advise you to do, okay? This is what I advise you to do. Don't steal from Walmart, don't steal from Wally World, don't steal from Target, don't steal from Best Buy, don't steal from nowhere, okay? And this is why, this is why. You're poor now. I've been there, so it ain't like I'm better than you. I've been there. Don't act like, oh, yeah, I think he's better than everybody else. Y'all made better decisions than some other people. But don't steal now, and this is why you don't want to steal. Because one day... Whatever made you hungry in that time that you was feeling like stealing, it's going to come back to haunt you. Yeah. Because one day you're going to be a YouTube star. One day you're going to be a YouTube star. And somebody, it's going to be even better with AI technology. And they're going to go back and be like, oh, so you got a record, huh? And they're going to pull up your record and it's going to say, what did he steal? Bananas. <laughs> bananas you gonna steal bananas and then that's when you're gonna lose your subscribers because they're gonna say oh man you ain't squeaky clean you ain't squeaky clean you was out here stealing bananas you thought that you was gonna hold us accountable and then you was over there ringing stuff up every night oh no, my god oh. no don't do it who you are today is not who you're gonna be tomorrow 
Keep your hands in your pockets. And if you're feeling like getting that five finger discount, then stay home. Stay home. Don't steal. Don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars. Stay home. You're gonna mortgage your future for a little bit of beef and rice. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue. Another shopper, Corey Shenneman, isn't confident removing self-checkout will improve his future experiences. Last week we were standing in the doorway as some guy was getting tased for stealing a jacket and had his pockets fully loaded with everything he could grab. I was See what I'm saying? Look, look, he just literally... God said where two or three is gathered, there he is in a midst of me, in his name. God said get a witness. God is trying to tell you something. This man just said, he said, man, listen. <laughs> yeah. That's a future YouTube star that just got tased at Wally World. He said, look, man, this guy stole a jacket and started stealing stuff in it, and he got tased at Wally World. Now he got a rap sheet. What you in for? Selling bananas inside of Walmart. Look, listen, you don't want to hear me? Listen, he warning you. I warned you, and then he warned you. Experiences. Last week we were standing in the doorway as some guy was getting tased for stealing a jacket and had his pockets fully loaded with everything he could grab. I was like, whoa. Case Western University professor Michael Goldberg says many retail stores are suffering from shrinkage. It's a term oh. used when a store has fewer items in stock than it's supposed to whether items were stolen, damaged, or expired. The National Retail Association says shrinkage in 2022 represented $112 billion in losses. He thinks Walmart's self-checkout removal is an attempt to try and save money. So some of the retailers, while they were originally enthusiastic about benefiting from um, the lower labor costs, um, that um, would take place with not having to hire folks to, to check folks out, are now recalculating, you know, sort of at that checkout line that it makes sense to to pay for that cashier to make sure that what um, is going in folks grocery bags is things that they're paying for. Some grocers are actually encouraging self checkout. Meyer Fairfax Market here on 105th Street. That is actually the only way you can purchase your groceries. And some shoppers say they love it. They guide you right to the registers and, you know, somebody's always walking around to help you out and it goes very smoothly. Goldberg thinks self-checkout eliminations will be done on a store-by-store -store basis. It's still costly for stores to hire cashiers. As the Department of Labor found in 2019, there were 1.4 million people working as cashiers. That number is now down to 1.2 million. So, I mean, the retailers are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Until you get in control of crime, and until you start solving for the root cause of why people is out here doing the stuff that they're doing, then you're going to have closures. You're going to have people getting arrested, getting records. They're messing up their future. Some future employer, they're going to go to college and get their life together. And then a future employer going to pull up their they, they rap sheet and say, ah, so you were stealing bananas, huh? And then at the same time, real, retailers is also trying to solve for um, the issue when it comes to not having enough employees, which maybe they solving that with the migrant crisis. I don't know. But don't get caught stealing bananas. That's the whole point of this whole conversation. Uh, and don't go to jail because you are going to be a future YouTube star. See how that all tied in? See how we work that together? That's that C student logic. Don't worry about it. We're going to get there. Let me read some of the super chats. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. K James says, hey, Anton, what's a good starting place for the Patreon? Well, it depends on what you're looking for, baby. Uh, if you're looking for stock club stuff, I would say look for the stock club stuff. And it's got a search bar in there in the Patreon, too. Look for the stock club stuff that started in the beginning of January if you want to understand from an investment perspective. If you're actually looking to level up in your job, then you can go through. I mean, you could really, outside of that, just go straight down and look at all of the previous videos. And, and it's, a, it's a host of stuff that, that can point you in a certain direction. What I would encourage you to do also is to make sure that you tap into the Discord because it's, a, it's additional conversations that go on outside of what it is that I post on the Patreon and the link to the Discord is in the description of any of the most recent videos outside of the Patreon. But it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to get a new job, I would say watch Interview Like a King. If you're looking to understand investments, eight things I look for when I'm looking to invest in a company. Um, if you're looking to understand content creation, because a lot of people are there for different reasons, um, I would absolutely tap into uh, what it is that I made last year and how I do it. If you're looking to get into real estate, 
Uh, that's a whole nother segment of videos that I've created inside of the Patreon mastermind sessions, accountability, how it is that you can manage your time, uh, how I manage my calendar, money, every single thing that's in there. Uh, and then you can continue to level up as a result of that. So it depends on what you're looking for. So just scroll through, get curious. And then once you find something, kind of go down that rabbit hole and then make sure you tap into the discord in order to be able to align yourself with people that can point you in the right directions. You know what I'm saying? So that's a phenomenal question. Shout out to Kay and all of my new bag chasers. <laughs> Patty Jackson says, yo, Anton, they out here looting in Chicago again because a black man that got shot by uh, Chicago Police Department 91 times. Look like we got our, our headline for tomorrow. <laughs> Look like we got our headline for tomorrow. Let me go ahead and let every single thing come out to play. And then once we get that information, we're going to be talking about it tomorrow. Shout out to Rhonda says, you're such an amazing human for all you do for us. Sending gratitude. Shout out to Sean. And Patty Jackson. Shout out to Patty Jackson for the five ball. Canelius Jackson says, Walmart tried to get around the lazy workers with the kiosk and it backfired big time. Baby stroller full of unpaid merchandise. Employees got lazier. Yeah. Do all back chasers have access to the discord? They do. They do. And we got some phenomenal moderators in there, too. Jay Ben says, uh, screw it. Legalize removal, but make it the cost the same as labor and delivery. Report it to the credit. Reported to credit. Also classified as student loans, so not even bankruptcy can erase it. Add interest with the exception to the R. I'm guessing that the R was going to be something else. Shout out to my dog, Jay Ben, and all of my people over there in the Arizona Island Island Stiley says, hey, Anton, how can I tell my coaching call date is set and ready to go? You can just send a follow-up email, and then my people going to make sure that you're taken care of. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just an email. We're going to make sure that you're good. Island Stiley. Um, Big J all day says, we the bag chasers. <laughs> Shout out to the chasers and the Patreon members. Willie Love says, that Walmart has always been trash. Well, it's because of the people. It's because of the people. Wendell Kilgore says, forget going to the grocery store. I'm using Instacart. Talk about it. Talk about it. Anton was on my bike yesterday. Vroom, vroom throughout the city. Hey, shout out to everybody that linked up with me and said, what up, though? Uh, as a result of seeing me out in the city, I met some phenomenal people. They said, man, you're just a regular person. You're just out here having a full good time or whatever. And then I ran into the security guard and he said, Anton Daniels. I said, what up, though? And we flicked it up. And then y'all see some pictures on Instagram. It's me. And we was getting in the end. We was having a good time. Shout out to everybody that I run into every single day in my journey throughout the city. And I be in every space, every crevice, every hood, every store. I was in Greek town yesterday, eating dessert, hanging out with the sidewalk, giving money to the homeless people, having a good time taking pictures, went into the new uh, pizza store down there in Greektown. Yeah, yeah, shout out to my people out there. So I am out in the streets. If y'all see me out in the streets, say what up, though. If y'all see me out in the streets, do not be a stranger. I am not Hollywood. I am not one of those type of people that be like, oh, my God, don't take pictures of me. I'm not one. I'm too good for this. Don't touch my car. Nah, man, listen. Climb through it. Hey, man, want to check this out? What's up, bro? I want to see what you're talking about. Hey, what you got going on? I want to pop up at your school. Somebody invited me over to University of Detroit Mercy to come and kick it with the kids. I will be setting that up, and so I'm coming over to Detroit Mercy to come and kick it with the people, all because I ran into my mans down there in Greek town. so shout out to you, big dog. Actually, let me give you a shout out. I want to say your name out, out, out loud. His name is... is Shout out to Devon Totley. Oh, I'm sorry. Donovan Totley. He's a CEO and creative director for U Plus U Mental Health app. Phenomenal app. Shout out to you. My dog, I appreciate you. Shout out to Donovan Totley, CEO and creative director of U Plus U Mental Health app. Shout out to you and your friend that I actually... Um, um, ran into yesterday and you was telling me and you were showing me what was going on. I can't wait to go over there to U University of Detroit Mercy. It was awesome. And uh, again, if y'all see me in the streets, man, don't be acting shy. I am not one of them type of dudes. I'm not stuck up. I'm not. I, I just like people. I like kicking it with people. I like running up with people. 
And I'm a human being just like you. I like good food. I like good energy. Um, all of that, man. So we all just people at the end of the day. Ken J says, a solo winner just claimed that $1.3 billion in Oregon. Yeah, I read about that. I read about that. Shout out to my dog, Ken J. Regime says, bag chaser business. Yeah. Shout out to Regime. Brittany B says, don't do coke in the bathroom and don't get caught stealing bananas. Facts. Facts. Also, my grandma went to heaven on 4-13-2020, and in 2021, I met you. Message. Yeah. Shout out to Granny. Shout out to Granny. And 4-13 is my birthday. Yo, Granny was a real one because she was an Aries. Hey, women are into those signs, so I'm going to start being into the signs. I'm going to be real earthy like everybody else. This is my moon sign. This is my shower sign. Carrie. Miss, Car Miss Carrie, I needed you on a panel last night. It was going crazy. We had all kind of scrippers and 2K and everybody. Everybody was up there acting a fool. My girl Randy pulled up. Randy Rosario from tonight's conversation pulled up. Logic was up there. Q was going crazy. Mika was losing her mind. V was over there telling me not to send no flights to people to come to Detroit. Yes. Carrie says, Anton, my 10-year-old son, LJ, shout out to LJ, wants to start a t-shirt business to make money to buy a computer for his gaming career. He's watching now and asks, what advice do you have? My advice to you, LJ, is to send me the t-shirts that you make. First of all, you want to minimize the amount of money that you're spending on the t-shirts. Don't drop ship it. Do it yourself, big dog. You might want to do some um, drop shipping in the beginning just to get started, but make sure you reinvest every dollar that you have back into the business so you can grow it bigger, right? That's number one. Number two, make sure you get a P.O. box. Don't have it going back to your house. Number three, once you get your design together, send it to me. Have Miss Carrie, baby. Send it to Anton from AntonDaniels.com so I can promote it for you, big dog. Get your website together. Get your Shopify, site, your Shopify site together so it can be easy for you to be able to get these orders and then give it to me so I can promote it and get the word out and then we're going to get you popping. Get your Instagram, your social media up. Send it to as many people as you can. Do some collabs. And then run it up. And then, hey, tell your mama to invest. Tell your mama and your father to invest in your business. And then tell them to send it to me so I can promote it and get the visibility out. Because marketing is just as good, just as good as a good product. The marketing got to be behind it. That's my advice to you. Send it to me and I'm going to promote it for you for free, big dog, because I love you and I love your parents. Yes, Miss Carrie, baby. Um, BC says some people don't understand how much easier it is for people to steal at self check. This will make a difference. I used to do app, I used to do AP at Walmart. Shout out to you, big dog. I appreciate you for the insight. Prince Elian says just emailed you about the bird flu epidemic. Oh man, <laughs> what happened to that boy? <laughs> what happened to that boy? Bird flu is out here? The bird man is out here? What happened to that boy? Shout out to the bird man. Yes. Tom, do you do search engine optimization? Well, every site should be optimized for the search engine. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Prince Elian. I appreciate y'all. Listen, listen, listen. Unfortunately, unfortunately, shout out to Brandy. Unfortunately. We have come to the end of the show. Oh, I don't have a, a, a thing for that. I don't have a drop for that. Oh, but guess what? I got two good things to tell you before we end the show. Actually, I got three. The first thing that I'm going to tell you is that we got after hours tonight, so we're going to be right back on the live stream. Yay! The second thing that I have to tell you is that we're going to be right here back in the morning for the Millionaire Morning Show. Yay! And then the third thing that I have to tell you is that, guess what? If you tap into the Patreon, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. We got a meetup coming up soon, all right? So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to pray for me as I pray for you. And then make sure you share this with your family and friends because we don't want to be rich by ourselves, all right? Teach Hanley 30% off your full order, your first order plus 20% off of life. And we got it running up, all right? I love you guys. I appreciate you. Make sure you share this with your family and friends. We don't want to be successful by ourselves. I love you. Thank you to everybody that support the platform. Every single Super Chat, every Cash App, every like, every dislike, 
Every person that subscribed to the platform, every person that types inside of the chat because Chat Lives Matters, you guys are the greatest of all time. I love y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all tonight. Peace. I'm earthy to you? No, I don't want to be earthy. No. <laughs>